All right, so today I want to talk about Ajax calls using fetch, cores, and cookies, and how these things all work together and fit together. So there's a lot of little nuances. This is, it's very unlikely that you're going to want to watch this only one time. You will likely come back to this video to reference bits and pieces or come back to the code to reference bits and pieces multiple times. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at setting cookies from JavaScript that's in the browser. So your script that's attached to your web page, setting cookies there. We're going to look at setting cookies on the server, how those cookies get transferred over, and situations where cores will impact whether or not those cookies are accepted by the browser or whether or not they're silently rejected and ways that we can get around this and ways that we can set up the server so that it will send us the cookies and we can save them in cross-origin ways. All right, so this page, I've got five buttons here. This one will set a cookie called uh, score, just using the script on the page. This one's going to do a fetch call to a server that I've got running, and it will return a cookie to me, or the command to set a cookie. This one will delete the cookie in the browser. This one will delete the cookie again. It makes a fetch call to the server, and then the server is going to send back a set cookie header, which is going to tell the browser that it should delete the cookie. But once again, cores comes into this and can screw around with us. Navigate to second page. Well, I've got a second page here just so I can take a look at the page and see whether or not cookies have been set. And then we can navigate back to the home page. All right, on the home page, we've got the index.html, the CSS and JavaScript are all embedded inside that file. If we refresh this, uh, favicon also comes down. Those are coming from here. I have the uh, GitHub repo for this is down in the description. You can link to that. You can download all the files. There is a server folder and a client folder. Inside the server folder, we've got a public folder, which is where these static files are kept, the index, the other page, and the favicon. But these are also in this other folder here, client. And this is just so if you want to use your host file and set things up to run as two different domains, you can run this through one thing, and then the server, the app.js file, can run separately on different uh, ports. And that's what I'm going to be doing through this video, is just using the ones inside of here. But I'm going to change my domain. One thing that we can take advantage of here is the fact that this IP address, 127.0.0.1, which is localhost, is viewed by the browser as being different than localhost. So here's the page running on localhost. Here's the page running on 127.0.0.1. It is the same HTML file, but the browser sees this as two different um, origins. So we're going to be able to do cores requests by making our fetch calls if we're on 127.0.0.1, we can make a fetch call on localhost, and the browser will see it as two different things. All right, so quickly going through what we're doing on the server. There's, uh, I'm using Express for my server. Uh, Package.json will show you the dependencies here. I've got cores installed, but I'm not using that. I'm going to manually add the code for doing the cores handling. Uh, cookie parser, because I'm working with cookies. Express and Nodemon, which will just keep my server up and running. If I make changes, it'll restart the server automatically. Okay, npm run dev is going to run this command, and that will start us up on this port number and run app.js. Nodemon is going to monitor for any changes, and if changes happen, it'll restart it. So if I control C to kill this, then I can do npm run dev, which is going to run this script to start us off. Okay, so we're up and running with our server. In the server itself, we have a get for just no URL, just the base URL. All that does is redirect to index.html. That's all it's doing. There's a get, uh, sorry, a set and a delete. Both of these over the get method. This one, what it's going to do is where we uh, set the cookie, and this one is going to delete the cookie. And by that, I mean this adds the header set cookie, and this also adds the header set cookie, but it gives an old expiry date 
This one gives an expiry date 30 days in the future. And that's how we're going to add and remove cookies or tell the browser to add and remove cookies. The last one here, name, what this one does is it handles everything that is not set or delete. So this is how we're going to get the index.html, the 2.html and the favicon. Those are going to be returned by this function. We're just setting up um, some options to say, go to this folder and grab the file and then send the file back. That's all this function is doing. Okay, so our get set and our get delete these two things inside the set there's a key and a value basically i'm just generating a 30 character long base 36 string it's just basically a unique string that i'm generating here and i'm calling it token res.cookie this is the express function for setting a cookie key is token the value is this unique string that i've created and here's the options so we're setting maximum age as 30 days. And then right now I'm using the default for path and same site. This means it's valued, uh, valid anywhere inside that path from the root of the website down. And same site, I'm going to come back and talk about that. We've got a couple of values here. We can say lax or strict or none. Um, we'll come back to that. And then the send is just sending a message. For the delete, it's the same sort of thing. The key is going to be whatever we pass in here. We're going to be deleting basically the same one we create here. Here we called it token. So down here, token will be part of the URL. And we're going to set token to an empty string and max age to zero. And what that's going to do is it's setting it to a date in the past, which automatically invalidates the cookie. All right. Jumping into our HTML and our JavaScript in the browser. Now, in the browser is the only way that you can really set a cookie. We do that by using the command document.cookie. So my base URL right here, 127.001, port 5555, back in the browser, that's what my HTML is being run through right now. So if I do a fetch call on this, the browser is going to see it as same site. If I change it to localhost, it's going to see it as a cores request. Okay, my DOM content loaded. I've just got listeners for all the buttons. And you can see that I'm writing out inside the page document.cookie. So pre.text content, that is the thing with the ID output which is just this paragraph right here. Every time I set a cookie or I change the value of the cookie, I run one of these functions, I'm always going to update this paragraph to show what the current value of document.cookie is. So we do that when the page loads. On the page right now, there's nothing here, which means there are no cookies. In the dev tools, if you go to application, cookies, there it is, you can see there are no cookies and I can refresh this there are no cookies here. So my buttons run these functions right here. Add and set. So add is the first one right here. This is the one that does the fetch request. Set is this one. So we'll do this one first. If I click on this, score right there. That is the value of document.cookie now. If I refresh it over here, there we go. There's the name is score and the value 205 This is a cookie. The browser has set a cookie. Now, if I go to the network tab and we look inside of the request for this HTML file, there's different points, different parts inside of here. We've got the request headers. So this is what the browser is sending to the web server. And the response headers is what the server is sending back to us. In the request, so from the browser to the server. We can look down through here. There's nothing called cookie. There's nothing called set cookie inside of here. In my response, again, there's no cookie. There's no set cookie value. But now that I've created a cookie, if I refresh this page, 
Now, if I go to index.html and we look inside of here, in the response from the server, there's nothing about cookies in here. There's nothing that says set a cookie. But in the request from the browser to the server, we do have a value. So the browser knows that it has a cookie and it's sending that to the server along with the request for this page. Every time you make a request to a server for a web page, the cookie is going to be sent along to the server. As long as we're talking about a request that's going to the same domain, the cookie gets sent along. So I'm making a request to this domain name. So cookies under that domain, if we come in here, we can see the domain is 127.001. So because this cookie exists on this domain, and it's the same as this domain where I'm sending the request for the HTML file, this cookie gets sent along to the server. Okay, so that's working. Great. Now, I'm going to do a fetch call. So we've got this one where the cookie score was sent. Now I'm going to do a Ajax request. So quickly jump into the code here to see what's going on. I will minimize that one. Shrink this down a bit. So we've got add and set. Set was the one where we clicked to set document.cookie. In here, score is the name and value. I'm just generating a random number. So document.cookie equals the key, which is score, equals value, which was my random number, path slash max age was my 30 day value. So there, that's setting it locally. That's setting it in the browser. Now the next one, when I want to click on the button to send a fetch request and try to set a cookie that way. So base URL slash set, my base URL right here, same as my HTML file, slash set. This is going to be making a request to this endpoint right here, get set. So we're making a call to this function pretty much. So we're creating a new request object. And inside of here, we've got these two settings. Mode, which can be, and I've got the values for mode and credentials down at the bottom of this file. So you can look at those in the reference here. Mode will be cores, no cores, or same origin. This is basically um, an instruction to the browser to say, my intention when I make fetch calls is that I'm going to allow the browser to make cores calls. I don't want the browser to ever make calls that are to different origin. And here, same origin can be pretty close to no cores in that as long as the fetch call is to the same domain name as the one that I'm on right now, we're good to go. So you're giving an instruction to the browser to say in the future what it's allowed to do. The credentials, Credentials are the cookies and then the authorization header. Those two things. When I'm making a fetch call, do I want to include these two things? Yes, if I'm making a request to the same origin. Never send them or always send them. So we've got these three options. We can play around with these values and change them as, as however we want. So cores, I'm saying, yeah, it's okay if you want to make a cross-origin request. Include, I always want to include them. So for now, we're going to say that. I make the fetch call, I get the value back, and then I want to write out all of the headers that come back to me. I want to see all the headers that came back from the server. That's all those response headers that we were looking at in here. I want to see as many of these as I can. And we're going to see that some will and some won't be visible to us. And I also want to see, hey, was there a header called set cookie? I want to write out what that value is. Okay, so we'll just save that. We'll make our fetch call. Click, 
There it is. Set. So in the request, we can see that the score cookie was being sent in the request that went to the server for this fetch call. It is to 127.001, which is the same as here. So we're talking about a same origin request that's being sent off. And then in my response, right here, there is the set cookie header. This is how the server tells the browser it wants to set a cookie. So it says, here's the value. Here's how long it's going to be valid for, when it's going to expire, the path for where it's allowed to happen, and same site is set to lax. So that means it's going to allow me to, that is the default value, it's going to allow me to save a cookie. And sure enough, on the page, now I've got two values saved as the cookie for this web page. If we look into application, there, they two, there the two of them are. So there's token and there's score. There's two different ones. They're both for the same domain. They're both on the same path. They've got similar expiry dates. They'll be slightly different. And lax was set for the same site value. Okay, we have that. That's working. Now I want to jump over to the console. And here's the list of the different headers. Now, We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different headers being shown. And set cookie header was null. This string right here, this is the message that came back from the server. So in app.js, this is a string. In app.js, right at the bottom here, this is the response. Set cookie header sent with a max age of 30 days. That's just a string coming back from the server that I'm writing out here. This null, that's what my JavaScript sees as the value of the set cookie header. It's very important to note that even if you are same site, set cookie is never accessible through the JavaScript. You can never change the value of that header coming back from the server. It's like the JavaScript doesn't even know it exists. But we do have these six values right here. If we compare them with the response headers, we can see I've got content length, content type, date, e tag, and x powered by. So one, two, three, four, five, and connection. There they are. There's all six of the headers, except for set cookie. They're all visible to us. Now, if we change the domain, so back in here, if we change the base URL to be the localhost one, now we're talking about a cores request. This is where things get a little bit more challenging. Now, we've said that we are going to make a cores request. We have said that we are going to include the credentials or that we want to include the cookies and the authorization header. We don't have one of these, but we do have cookies that we're working with. I'm going to refresh my page. Okay, so in the index, my response, there's nothing about set cookie there. My request, there's the cookie, good. Both values are still here. Those were sent to the server. Now I'm going to click set cookie. Okay, that one still worked. I've got a brand new value here. The token is still the same one, but the score has been changed. We look inside of here. Sure enough, there's the new value for score. Token is still the old one. So that was setting it in the browser. There was no restrictions. It didn't matter where we were, where we were making fetch calls to. When I do this one, though, now I get a fail. So why am I getting a fail? Now this is where we start getting to the core stuff. We were on 127.001 making a request to localhost. Well, that's been blocked by cores because there was no access control allow origin header. If an opaque response serves your needs, you can set it to no cores. Well, that's not going to set our, meet our needs. We actually do need to get the values back. So we need to make sure the server is sending us this header. Back in here, in my set, here is the access control allow origin. And it needs to match where the request is coming from. 
if I take this out, I'm just going to temporarily move this over. This is going to be the HTTP slash slash localhost colon um, 5555. This is going to say that we're allowed to deal with stuff coming from here. We're also going to have to add this allow credentials, but I'll run it once just to show that message. There we go. It says the value of the access control allow origin header cannot be wildcard. A lot of the times wildcard is just absolutely fine, but we can't use that because our credentials mode is set to include, meaning it's not just a request. We're also sending cookies and or the authorization header. If you're sending those additional things, wildcard is not acceptable. It has to be an exact match for what we're doing. And that's why we have this other header here. So I'll put this one back into here. Now we're going to have an exact match. So I'll clear this out, run it again. Okay, we have an exact match now, so that part's okay, but now it's telling us access control allow credentials header. That one's missing. It's also going to be true if we're doing credentials include, which we're working with cookies, so we have to have credentials set to include. So we have this one right here. Because we've got credentials include, because we do want to send the cookies because of that. There we go. Now, the request went. The request came back. We still can't see the set cookie header here from JavaScript, but if we come in here and I take a look at it, uh, okay, the response, there it is. That's what I was looking for. In the response, here's the set cookie header coming back. So we got that because we said same site was lax. So we're not saying strict. We are allowed to go beyond, but we had to have the credentials set to include right here so that they would be sent. And on the server, we had to have these two things. These are things that the uh, cores middleware module right up here. These are things that are, that are done automatically by this but we're doing it manually here just to see all the pieces. Okay, so we've got access control allow origin and allow credentials. Those things are both good so that we can send and receive cookies. Okay, so there's cookie, token set to F2C and so on. But here, we don't have F2C. It, this is the old value of the cookie. Come in here, we can see here's the old one and here's the new one. So lax, and this one's lax, but we've got a little message here and it's highlighted in gold. This set cookie had the same site lax, but came from a cross origin response. So we cannot do that with lax. We have to say that it's wide open. It's not just lax, it's from anywhere. We can make a cross origin request. And that's right here we had lax, which was the default when we set our cookie. So we're inside of the set. When we're setting our cookie, this can't be lax. It's got to be none. When it's lax, it exists, but it's sitting here localhost, and we're not allowed to do anything with it. The browser accepts it and saves it here, but it's on localhost. We're not allowed to do anything with it we're only allowed to use the ones for 127 right here because we're on 127. If I come over here, here's localhost instead of 127. If I refresh, so we don't have the cookie here in the request, back on this page, this gold one, it's saying, hey, we can't really do anything with this because it was set with lax. So, We've updated this to say none. When I refresh this page, okay, we still have the old value, the new value, 
for uh, sorry the old value for token and score inside my request headers there they both are we're not allowed to touch that other one yet if I set it in the browser we're good we can change that in here this value is updated if I do this one send the request you can see now I have four of them so here's the one that I couldn't touch because we said it was lax even and it was cross origin so we're not allowed to touch that one this one's also localhost but it's got a new value here it's not this one's set to none which means we're okay to use this one the browser's allowed to use it it didn't just come back and get saved it's actually something that we're allowed to use on the page now this value is still this one because of the domain this is the domain that we're on the 127 if I come over to this domain and we refresh inside of here there is the value so the NM72 there it is the NM72 this is the one where we set with none we come back in here the NM72 set with none for local host so if we're on local host web pages from localhost are allowed to access that cookie even though I was on a different domain when that cookie got saved it was because I said same site none that I was allowed to save it we had on the server we sent back these headers to say that yes we're allowed to do cross-origin stuff I'm going to allow you to take it we had an exact match for whatever the domain was and same site said none with all those things set it means that the browser is allowed to save it and if there was a frame on the page that was running from this other domain it would have access to this this web page doesn't have access to it it's got access to its own version the 127 one so click here again we're changing the localhost one now it's EQS if I come over here and I refresh EQS so the cookies belong to the domain on which they were set my fetch call that's what's setting it right here this URL whatever that domain is that is the domain that the cookie will be attached to the fact that I'm able to set it for this different domain is because I've said I'm going to allow cores requests and I'm going to include credentials so I'm allowed to work with cookies and do this but the script that's running on this page the script is coming from this IP address from this domain so it's only allowed to see cookies on this domain back in my console if I click, the, click this again here's the credentials that I'm allowed to see when I'm on localhost so all those things are coming back the set cookie one is still blank I'm not allowed to see that ever over here console let's clear this and do this one more time I'm back to only seeing or I'm only seeing two of the headers this is something else that happens with cross origin requests I can only see seven different headers so this one had all these headers for the exact same call to the same server because this one originated from localhost I can see all these headers this one I only see two here and I'm limited to at the bottom here I've got the list these seven headers are the only ones that I'm allowed to see for a cores request if I want the JavaScript to be able to see more headers than just that seven then on the server there's another thing that we have to set and that's this one access control expose headers here we provide a list of the headers that it's allowed to see that the JavaScript is allowed to see 
even if it's a cross-origin request, or particularly if it's a cross-origin request. I've added date and e-tag to this list. So we've got content length and type. That's two of the seven. If I do this again, there's those two, and there's date and e-tag. I added those two in by putting them in this list. If you want, you can change this to be a wildcard. You can say, yeah, I will allow everything to go through. I don't care what the JavaScript sees. It can see all the headers, except, of course, set cookie. So I'll do this one more time. Or I guess maybe uh, Chrome no longer lets us set the header to wildcard to show everything. We have to provide the actual list. So we'll put it back to that. I'll put the actual list of headers that I want showing up. So date and e tag. There we go. There's date and e tag along with the seven or two of the seven. If I go to the network tab and we look at our request, here's the response headers. And we've got access control, those three. And then content length, content type, date, and e-tag. So we have those two. We added these two on the server. We'll never get to see set cookie, but we could make it show up or make it show these other ones. Connection, access control, allow origin. So if we add those into this list, There we go, those are saved. So now these ones should all appear when we make a request. So we'll clear, do it again. And there we are. There's the two that we added along with content length and type, date and e-tag. So back into the server, uh, looking at the delete functions, these are set up to run pretty much the same way. We've got those headers that we can add, the same site, if we want to allow cross-origin things, same site needs to be set to none. Now, if we've got same site set to none, like we have up here, and let's turn on these as well. There we go. Now we should be able to do the delete. So we're setting it, yes, and then delete. So we can see here the delete failed. And this isn't failing because of what we've got on the server. This is failing in my client-side JavaScript because my request mode is same origin. So let's go take a look at that one. Here we go. Inside my function delete. Yeah. So here's different values than we have up here. Mode and credentials. These work great. If I'm on 127.0.0.1 and I'm requesting to 127.0.0.1, but we changed it here to request over localhost. So the browser sees that as a cross-origin request. So to allow cross-origin requests, we have to say cores. And for the credentials, we'll say include. There we are. Now we have to refresh our page. So we'll clear this out, refresh the page. Now we have our cookie, run the delete function, and there we go. So token cookie set to expire immediately. That's this one. And that's what happens when you delete a cookie is you're not really removing it. It will still be here inside of application. So this UV one right here, it's just set to expire right now. That's what's happening here is it's not set to expire in the future. It's either right now or sometime in the past. And whichever way you do it, as soon as you close the browser tab and you reopen the web page, that's when the cookie will disappear. We've just set it to expire as soon as the session is done. Now, there was one other thing that I want to note here. This message, this warning that we're getting, um, because we are using same site none 
with the cookies. That's what allows us to do cross-domain cookies. Like here, we've got the one for localhost and the one for 127. 127 is the one that we've got right here. Localhost, this is actually the one that we're uh, setting to expire. If we take a look in our network tab and see that delete, the response header, set cookie, token max age zero. So this is the one that's being set to expire with same site none. If you are using same site none, it's important to note here that um, starting in the very near future, you're going to have to add the secure property. Now, because I'm running it over HTTP on localhost, that's why I didn't add that additional setting for the cookie. That is one of the options. So if I'm on the server side, we've got max age, path, same site. We should, because we're saying same site none, we should add secure as a value here for both of these. Right here and secure that should be added but because i'm not running over https i cannot use that setting right now so i have to leave that off just because i'm not using an https uh, an ssl certificate okay so a lot of different moving parts here we've got the different headers that we have to set on the server if we're going to allow cross origin if we are doing cross-origin with cookies, we have to have an exact match for whatever the domain and port number are. That's what we get with the request headers origin. The access control expose headers allows us to control the list of headers that are visible to JavaScript. That's what we're getting here inside of our set function. When we're getting the value back, sorry, in the add function right here, when we're doing the fetch call to set the cookies. This is where we're writing out all the headers that exist. These headers are only visible if on the server we have done this access control expose headers. That's how we get to those values. Otherwise, it's just those seven, and the seven I have listed down here at the very bottom of this page. These are the seven that you'll be able to see without setting that header. Set cookie, set cookie two will never be accessible. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I know it's a lot of information put in there. If you have questions, I'll answer as many as I have time for. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.